Welcome back, bros. Here we are. Hope you're feeling blessed and good. It's a beautiful day. Uh, it's snowing, but you know what? Hey, we're going to make it out of this thing. It's just been coming down day after day. I'm over here in Ohio. And uh, it's just, it's good. It's good. We're almost making it out. So, look, we got to be men. We got to grow up and we got to become men. And what that means is that we've got to be disciplined. We got to make sure that, that we're being disciplined and we're not just goofing off. When we were younger, many of us had a mom and dad that raised us and we didn't have to worry about anything. We just get up, mom's making you some oatmeal, putting a little brown sugar in there. You're, you have your family, you're kind of just waking up, you're going to school. And they're the ones that discipline you. They say you got to get to bed at this time. So you're going to bed at 9 o'clock. They say you got to wake up at 6 a.m. You got school in the morning. So now you're disciplined to wake up. You got to make your bed before you go to school. You have to do your chores on Saturday and Sunday. My responsibility was to clean the toilets. And at the age of 10, all of us had to start doing the dishes. And so from the very get-go, I was being disciplined. My mom disciplined me. She, you know, she had me doing this and that. My dad disciplined me. He had me going out into the yard. He had me going out to the U-Haul, helping him unload the truck, get ready for the flea market, and uh, cleaning everything up, you know, dusting off the antique, stuff like that. And so I think many of you guys can relate. You had some discipline. The parents enforced the discipline. You kind of followed the orders. You didn't have anything to worry about. You kind of got your meals, you had your bed, kind of do whatever you want, play. Play was the only thing. So you just played and you did what you were told. And so that's kind of, that's a good way to be raised, you know? And as we get older, a lot of us end up, we have this transition. Usually when we go to school and we go live in a dorm or when we skip school altogether and we just leave our parents' house. And this is what I noticed is a very crucial time for a man uh men especially because men are, i think are more likely to just go on their own you some women usually get married into uh and they go live with a guy but men you kind of live on your own and usually it's tough it's hard out here bro i've realized that it's very easy to get undisciplined and discipline is the result of being present, of being, you know, grounded. And what ends up happening is when you get on your own, now is the first time in your life that you got to have all of these worries and you start thinking about the future. And one of my favorite books, The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, it says you lose your childhood the moment you start worrying about the future. And it's so true. So we start thinking about the bills, we start thinking about money, we start thinking about girls, we start thinking about where we're going to be in five years. Like, we never thought about this. You would ask me when I was five years old, 10, 13, 15, what do you want to be when you grow up? I was saying the basis, I want to be an actor, I want to be a fireman, I want to be, uh, I want to be, you know, like a professional paintballer. I want to be... A professional basketball football player I thought I was gonna be all those things you know and then I, reality hits you you start thinking a lot you start caring what people think about you you start having expectations and all of this stuff is just kind of in the subconscious so you never think about how how influenced you are you start living in the future man so part of what being a man is is waking up taking day by day Moment by moment, being present in the day and doing what's in front of you. That's really it. Because from there, what you're, what you're doing is you're becoming solid. You're becoming an individual that's not heady and, and projecting into the future with his insecurities and his worries. And you're just doing what's in front of you. You're trusting God. By being present, you're trusting that the universe is doing what it wants. You're connected to God, connected to that source. You got nothing to worry about. 
All right, so what ends up happening then is you get back to the basics of doing what works. The reason we get undisciplined, we start doing all of this shit to make up for our lack of um, our lack of control because we're so like we're trying to we're just stressed, man. What is stress? Stress is getting away from the present and really trying to figure everything out on your own, and it stresses you out, man. You're go go go, or you just end up being like, you know what? F this. Life is meaningless. You're stressed. What happens when you when you feel like you lose all control? When it's too much to handle, you crumble, and to make yourself seem like you got it together, you end up doing drugs. You know, you spark up that joint. You hit that that nicotine. You, you, nicotine's like the poor man's band aid, dude. The, nicotine is a poor man's salvation. Like I've been addicted to nicotine. It's so difficult uh, to like turn away from any kind of drugs when you don't feel like your life has is is whole. And you get that feeling when you get accustomed to getting in the present moment, day by day. Not worrying too much, not thinking that you got to do this and that and all everything. No, you take it day by day, and in that you become disciplined because you start seeing what actually works. All right, so all the drugs and stuff, you start to realize, man, I don't really need that because I'm, I don't got anything wrong with me. I don't got anything I need to really fix. So the the vices like porn and stuff, you realize I'm looking to all this stuff to be my salvation for being lost in the world. And man, it's, and you know, drugs feel really good because they give you that temporary, but the come down is stressful in itself. You have these highs and lows all throughout the day. So it's very taxing on your brain. You'll feel tired randomly. You have your energy go just like this, man. You will feel, I feel like nicotine especially will make you very anxious if you have too much of it. And it, more than ever, guys are hitting the vapes. So you're getting this constant like paranoia where you can't really relax. And I've almost seen this in myself, like being addicted to nicotine in the past. I would, uh, I would always be like ahead of myself. Like, like, um, like I'm never really calm and grounded. So that's just, that's just that. But you know, all of these escapes just like, man, it is, is stressful. So you turn away from that and what you are left with is to go back to discipline because discipline works on a day to day. So what happens is you start cleaning your room. You start, you stop avoiding your responsibilities. You know, when the dishes are piled up, usually they're piled up because you just like, you look at them and you're just unhappy with your life and everything's ruined and stuff. So you look at the dishes and you're just like, fuck those dishes. Instead of just being, looking at them and like, it's no big deal. You just do them because they need to be done. Everything's such a big deal when you're in your head. You, you just make your bed now. You just get up, you get up at a good time instead of sleeping in all day long because you, you get up, what, what's the point of getting up? See, that's all self-talk. And so the self-talk is, is all of this nonsense that we think is just us because we think we're our own God. We think that we really got things figured out, that we really are that smart. And look, all we have to do is return to discipline to be a man. We start eating good food because the junk food is just another vice looking for salvation, looking for an escape from the living hell that we've created inside of our heads. We stop binge watching all this TV and all this, you know, this like, frivolous, uh, time wasting stuff that we're doing just to escape. We stop playing all the games on our phones, surfing random forums, uh, talking with other miserable men that are just as lost as us. You notice that a lot of your life is going to change. This is waking up because you're now you're present. It starts making sense. You start being happy just to be alive. And when you get off all the drugs and all of this dopamine sapping different vices that we're doing, you'll notice that this is how it feels to be a real man. And little things start, start 
you just start getting like these little uh, revelations throughout the day because you don't have these fake hits of hope or these euphoric moments that are from drugs. You just get it naturally, which is like looking out of the window, looking at the sun. You're kind of just grateful. It's, it's a very easy to be grateful. And it's easy. You start to learn like if I do this, the very simple things, the basic things, I can handle all the stress that comes up day by day. You stop projecting into the future so much. You stop all the worrying. You just kind of handle the stress as it comes to you. And you're, you're like, man, this is not that difficult. It's really not that hard. So again, back to the basics, man. You start, you learn what healthy food is. You start eating healthy food because you know all the junk food is just like a drug. All right, it's gonna make you feel no good. You start paying attention to what you're eating. Basic whole foods. You start going to sleep at a good time. You turn off the music, you turn off the ASMR and staying up all late and all the podcasts when you're laying in bed, you get off your phone, you stop watching porn because the desire for porn fades. You just realize it's, it's like a bunch of actors on here. It's just fake. It's like, how do I even, what am I getting off to? What do, why do I even need to get off in the first place? You start waking up, you make your bed, you do your laundry, you cook yourself some breakfast, you meditate. First thing in the morning, because you know that sort of sets the pace for the day. So you're just sitting there in the, in the meditation. And I think we should all be doing that. So this week, let's all meditate at least five minutes every morning. You guys can commit to that. I can do that. Five minutes in the morning. You're going to get up. You're going to sit on your little cushion. You're going to sit there. You can put your... I like to put my hands together like this. My right hand on top of my left there's no this isn't a signal this isn't some magic witchcraft i'm just sitting here like this thumbs are kind of together softly or you can just sit like that you know but sit on the ground and uh if you need get a cushion and just follow your breath your body knows how to breathe you're not going to choke you're not going to stop breathing just follow it pay attention observe the thoughts one way that i like to do this i picture myself on a life tower and i look down onto the ground you know say you're on a beach and all the thoughts are kind of like these clouds. And they're just passing. And so you'll get absorbed in those. You'll go into your thoughts. And then in the meditation, you could just, oh, I see. I'm, I'm thinking again. Let me just observe it. Let me watch them. And what this does is it dis distances you <coughs> from all the emotions. And all of the, the very things you start, man, you start going deep, dude. You start peeling back that onion. It's like, wow, why do I think like this? Why do I feel this way? Why am I so needy? Why do I get so angry? Why am I so afraid of everything? Why do I hate everyone? Why do I feel like I always got to give my opinion? Why do I want to be seen as so knowledgeable? Why do I want to be so cool? Why do I dress like this? Why do I do this? Why do I listen to this kind of music? It all starts making sense. It's amazing, dude. It's crazy. You start looking at and it. And so that's with five minutes of meditation. That's just, you can like, you start really seeing the truth. And so you just observe them. You start doing this more and more. Now you just are a grown man, disciplined. You become that monk. You, this is monk mode, by the way. This is the real monk mode. You're just taking that time where you're becoming aware of yourself. All of this thinking that's causing you misery. You get back to the basic discipline and doing what, what it was working and uh, cut all the BS. And so that's really it. And so five minutes this week, you get up, you meditate for five minutes, you carry on with your day. You go and you cook your food, you know, you do your stuff and you'll notice that sets the pace, you'll be more calm. And then maybe after a week or two, we can take it up to 10 minutes. Now we're just in the habit of doing this. Now we're present. We don't really think too much about what people think about us. We're just becoming our how we're meant to become without all the unnecessary baggage. Watch guys, you're going to feel like this alpha strong power within your body. All right. You're going to feel complete. You're going to feel whole and it's, there's literally no better feeling, but it's hard to get there because we've lied to ourselves thinking that we need all this extra stuff, all these drugs and all this time to fill the boredom. But really that's like the greatest teacher, all the stuff that causes discomfort, like the cold, and, uh, you know, just eating healthy food. We, it was like, it's so boring. It, it feels bad. It hurts. Sitting in meditation hurts. It's, it's just boring. 
when really that's our greatest teacher that is getting closer to the truth, teaching us how to be men. All right. So we got to stop running and get real. And so on the, to end this video, there's two sides to the coin where I've seen people like they go ham in life, you know, they're say, I saw some of my bosses working at the car dealership and they were hyped up on caffeine, doing cocaine. They thought they had everything figured out and they would just snap like that. Some of them were overweight. Everyone had like problems. They were either had problems with their kids, they were divorced or they were having problems at home with their wife. And what happens is they went hard, man. They were like, okay, I'm my own guy now. I, I figure everything out. I'm going to work super hard. I'm going to just go in and, and handle everything. And it, it's good. You know, life is kind of working. They're kind of getting the money. Everything's going until a point when it, they find themselves in chaos because they didn't have that spirituality. They didn't have that presence that day by day. So it's just overtaxing. The adrenal fatigue, uh, lack of time spending with their kids, no wisdom in like how to be a man in a relationship because they just, they were just so used to reacting for everything. And so I saw that dynamic and it was seductive because I was like, yeah, man, these guys are pimps. Like these guys are hard workers. I want to be like that. And I realized though at the end of that road is sort of misery and setting yourself up for for unhappiness, even though the money was coming in week after week after week. At the end of that, it was like, man, I don't know if I want that. And that's another thing is you're going to have the day. The reason I say be a man, take it day by day. Get used to the present is because you're going to have days where you get a promotion at work. You think you got all this money coming in. You're going to be super happy. You know what? You go out, you buy a new car. You bring it home to your hot girlfriend and you're super pumped up for about a week. And then you'll notice after that week, now you're back to baseline because nothing's really changed except the number in your bank account, but nothing internally has changed. So, so you're going to have those spikes. You're going to feel motivated and then you're going to, you know, you're going to have a one week, no fap streak. And then you're going to hit your habits. And I get these questions all the time. It's like, Eli, why can't I hit my, I can't hit and stick with my habits. And it's because we're always thinking about the future. We're always projecting into what's next, what's next, what's next. And so we constantly get out of the present and we let all these things like, like spike our imagination for the future. We think we're going to be CEOs and speakers and like these great men and people are going to remember us. And that's like in the, that's like some fantasy land. And when we don't see that coming about, it's when, when we do well on this and it doesn't stay elevated, then we get depressed. And so that's the other side of the coin is now we have all these men that are just depressed and they find meaning is meaningless in life. And it's still a cause of them being too much up here. Being too judged. I'm not good looking enough. I'm not tall enough. I don't got enough money. I don't have enough energy. You got enough energy, man. All right, you guys are young. You can get up. It just takes that discipline. It takes these small little steps. You don't got to be great. Don't get sold on the whole illusion that you got to be someone in life. All right, I know that a lot of you guys want to be the 1%. You've been built on this dream that you can have a Ferrari. If you don't have a Lamborghini, if you're not balling and spinning plates and have five girls sucking you off or never participating in a threesome or never really, no one knows your name, you're not going to be anything. Dude, fuck that, dude. We're going to die at the end. What's it matter? So you better get used to that mindset of just taking it day by day. What, what about the guys that are doing stuff? They're going to die. George Clooney, getting older, dude. You're going to die, bro. Yeah, he busted a few nuts. I'm sure he slept with beautiful women. But he's going to the grave soon. He's got one foot in the grave. You know, Warren Buffett, billions of dollars. You know, see you, man. Probably had a good life. Probably had a lot of nice, beautiful steak dinners. In the end, who cares? It's like a lot of us think we're missing out on all these experiences. But what are they going to do for you at the end? So you got to get real with yourself. Because you're playing this game. You're lying. And uh, you're keeping yourself a bon uh, uh, bondage. Dude, if you really want to make your life better, do the basics. Get back to discipline, return to what works, 
work out, lift your spirits, you know, lift to lift your spirits, eat good food to make you feel good, uh, take care of your body, that's your temple, that's your car, that's your vehicle for life, move your body, go out and walk, wake up on time, stop going to bed so late, get back to the basics, man, say hi, you don't need game, talk to a girl like you would talk to me, talk to a girl like you would talk to your brother or your friend, girls are no different, you don't got to seduce them, you don't got to have 10 different pickup tips, you see a girl look at you, cold approach her, you don't need all this game, girls want it too, man, all right, just do what you got, to and don't give up so easy, be a little bit patient, like I said, day at a time, you guys are making yourself miserable, because you're believing a bunch of bullshit lies, all right, you've been sold, you've been fed this every day, that you're not good enough, you need to be something, you need to have this much money, no dude, be alone for a little bit, make yourself happy alone, make yourself happy living in a shack, and then grow, grow your empire from there, all right, but uh, stop lying to yourself. Get real. Return to discipline. Let's be men. All right. The world needs real men. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.